their true goal is not fe- that that's the big ruse it's not feminism it's not the equal treatment of women uh it's to basically get free stuff that's it and if they can bring down the west and they can go ahead and make a a, a, a criminal class and a victim class they can totally play this victim card and basically transfer funds and get wealth distribution from us our number one investment idea for 2016. Trading at one times 2016's estimated revenue, this tiny stock is now partnering with billion dollar giants, filling the huge void left by Motorola to a potential $10 billion market. This company has attracted significant shareholders in its industry and a fund that has close ties with the Disney family. With an enormous 60% insider and management ownership, this small company is becoming a cash gusher very quickly. Learn more about this 30 cent stock at crushthestreet.com slash win. Well, hello everyone and welcome into crushthestreet.com. I got a returning guest today. His name's Aaron Clary. He's Captain Capitalism, a.k.a. Captain Cappy. He he does very straightforward conservative talk, and he consults your problems, if you have any, at assholeconsulting.com. Whether you are screwed up on your own or your parents did that job for you, he'll give you the direct advice on how to proceed, and I must say it's rather entertaining, and he's got some books as well. Aaron, uh, let's get right into the interview. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Aaron, uh, there's been a lot of political posturing and sides being taken on what to do with the Syrian refugees. And it's a very sad situation for the majority of these people. I must concede that the vast majority aren't terrorists. Not all Muslims are terrorists. And you can even make the case that the U.S. destabilized the region. So it's only fair that we take in these refugees. The problem is that we would be importing a flood of people who are predominantly Muslim. And Americans don't want an influx of Islam in this country. The true religion is violently against Christianity, the West, and anyone, quite frankly, who isn't Muslim. What are your initial thoughts on this? Um, I like life, (laughs) and I do believe I have the right to life, (laughs) and that uh, they shouldn't be in. I, I, what I'm amazed at is the amount of coverage that is, and it, it's a testament to two things. One, how the American public has been so brainwashed to think, well, maybe we should let a violent group of people in that have terrorists. So there's that aspect, and how the media just has absolutely no logic nor any kind of care for protecting the safety of people. Mm-hmm. And uh, but but for me, it's it's a very it's a non it's a it's a non-issue it's like oh we're bringing in a bunch of muslims of which you know depending on what estimate you want to say 10 to 25 percent are radicalized and have no problem killing uh uh, westerners or that's all they live for or or, are violent uh no no you don't bring them in and and if if you can't even have the spine or the self-respect to say no we're not bringing these people in like they did in hungary uh you don't deserve to exist as a population if you can't do some simple basic self-survival stuff like this uh, you, you don't deserve to survive. So, I mean, me personally, I like me. I don't know about the rest of the Americans. <laughs> I don't know how guilt trip they've been with their diversity and their leftist brainwashing and all this other stuff, how we're evil because we were successful and, and uh, because patriarchy or whatever reasons they give nowadays. Uh, but sorry, I like living and I don't want to die. And uh, a very simple thing to do would be to tell these guys to go take a hike like Jimmy Carter did back during the Iran crisis. And, uh, and, and and not be apologetic or just say, no, get the heck out of here. Mm. Well, this is straight out of the Quran and things that Islam preaches. Slay the unbeliever wherever you find them. You will kill anyone who leaves Islam. You will behead non-Muslims. Now, it's not politically correct to say that extreme Islam is bad, but liberals try to make it into a race battle, like white America versus Islam. Now, number one, being born a certain color isn't a choice, but aligning yourself with the violent set of beliefs is, and therefore can be justifiably condemned. Is it okay for me to say that I'm not okay with true Islam, like straight out of the Quran Islam, without being some sort of bigot? Well, yeah. I mean, why, why would you let the left or the media uh, frame the debate? I mean, just because some worthless journalism majors who couldn't get a job in the real world and have no skills says you're racist because that's the narrative that doesn't make it so. I mean, have a, at least a little bit of self-respect. You got, uh, and it couldn't, it doesn't have to be Islam. I mean, good Lord, go back to the, the um, 
oh, the wars between the, the Protestants and the Catholics where they're slaying each other. Uh, any ideology, doesn't matter what, if it says, well, you better join us or we're going to kill you, that's tyranny. And mm -hmm. I, I don't care how many diversity points our idiotic uh, uh, media gives them. Uh, no, it, this is just common sense. I, you, 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 don't, <laughs> you don't kowtow to threats like that, join or die. Uh, that that is a virus that needs to be wiped from the planet. Now, of course, you know, the, Christianity went through a reformation. Uh, we're kind of hoping Islam would go through a reformation. But as it stands right now, when you got people cutting heads off and stoning people, and if you're gay, you die, and all this other uh, truly Neanderthalic BS. Uh, no, that is that is that's that's not even people you negotiate with. That is people you at minimum quarantine, if not you wipe off from the face of the planet. Mm. Aaron, let's talk women's rights, Islam, and liberals. Uh, liberals like to talk about how they are for women's rights. They say things like, for every dollar a man makes, women make 75 cents. Other things are commonly said, such as women should be able to do what they want with their own body. There should be equal treatment in the workforce. Contraceptions need to be paid for by insurance companies, on and on. But yet they accommodate Islam left and right, which is the ultimate slam on women. Again, stuff right out of the Quran. You can rape, marry, and divorce prepubescent girls. You can enslave women for sex and work. You can beat women. To prove rape, you need four Muslim male witnesses. And the ultimate degradation of women, if you kill non-Muslims in the name of jihad, you will receive 72 virgins to have your way with. What is wrong with this picture? Uh, there's nothing when you realize that feminism really isn't for feminism. It's Marxism, and they cowardly hide behind their gender to extract resources and play the victim game. Uh, and then when they are faced with something like Muslim, not, not Muslims in general, but radical Islam or violent Muslims, people that will punch you, beat you, kill you if you besmirch them, uh, then the feminists become amazingly quiet because they're cowards. Uh, they, they're, they're, not, they're not ideologues about let's go ahead and help out women across the world. They're like, oh, I have a vagina. How can I use this to get money? Oh, look, feminism. Uh, and when you view it through that lens, it's, it's much clearer. They're, they're not going to – look, this is why they'll pick on white males all day because white males have something to lose. we got careers. We, we, we're relatively rich, uh, most successful group in the world. Um, and we don't want to get lawsuits, and we got frankly got other things to do than respond to feminists. Uh, so they can pick on white males. They can pick on Christians. Um, I don't know if you've seen the video. It was down in Argentina where these feminists were like spitting in the faces of these poor Argentinian men mm. who were defending their um, their cathedral, I think it was, or their uh, basilica. Um, and they would never strike back because they're Christians. And, and they know that. So these women could go ahead and pick on it. But there's another video out there where some of these girls from Femen try to interrupt a Muslim uh, uh, speech and they got the crap kicked out of them and that's basically why you don't see women feminists in, in the western world uh, roundly denouncing Islam is because one they're afraid and two the enemy of my enemy is my friend they're happy that Islam is trying to destroy the West they're happy Islam is trying to take out uh, America and, and Britain and all that and so they're, they're um, understandably silent because that their true goal is not fe that that's the big ruse it's not feminism it's not the equal treatment of women uh, it's to basically get free stuff that's it and if they can bring down the West and they can go ahead and make a, 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 a criminal class and a victim class they can totally play this victim card and basically transfer funds to get wealth distribution from us <laughs> yeah the the enemy of the enemy is my friend and I, I think that sums it up really well uh, Aaron I live about 30 minutes away from where the San Bernardino massacre took place uh, whatever it was a week ago or so and I went to the gun range the following Sunday and I tell you what there were, were a <laughs> lot of people shooting a lot. I'm sure there was <laughs> <laughs> um, how important is it for law-abiding citizens to be able to carry a gun in a world where bad people to exist well, it's, it's vital. You absolutely have to carry a gun. I wouldn't even just recommend gun. I'd recommend armor and, and body. I have, I have a bulletproof vest. Uh, I have armor. Uh, armor is a little bit more clunky uh, than that, but a lot of it I also use for work. Um, but yes, absolutely. I mean, look, it, the question is, do you like yourself? Do you want to live? 
Uh, I can understand some millennial emos and, and uh, social justice warriors might hate their life. That's a question for them. Uh, but for the rest of us that are mentally sane, we actually like life. And we have a right to life. And guess what? The real world is basically there's some people that want to kill you for no good reason at all. And uh, you better get a gun. You better carry it. You better train with it. You better keep your eye open. You better look for threats. And if you know, I know a lot of people are always talking about the guns, but uh, a lot of times it does help to have armor as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, I, I just I used to live in Wyoming, and everyone carried a gun, uh, and it was just a given. And it was amazing how courteous and polite and kind people were to one another because you knew they had a gun. Half the time people carried, they open carried, they didn't carry concealed. Uh, so if we can get back into the mindset uh, that you carry a gun no matter where you go like you carry your cell phone, uh, that will definitely deter and make a lot of people think twice. Of course that's not going to happen in California, that's not going to happen in the colleges or the universities, that's not going to happen in the schools. Um, so you'll always have these soft targets. You'll have these people paying a target on their head saying, this is a gun-free zone. And uh, that's where the violence will likely occur. Uh, but in general, uh, you know, carry, get a gun. This is, this is basic self-defense, and this is the basic consequences of having multiculturalist-type politicians vote in importing people that hate this culture and hate you. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I'm going to ask you a question that's, Basically, the what's the what's the middle ground? Um, shooting a gun obviously carries a great amount of responsibility. Especially, I remember the first time I shot a gun, and the the responsibility I felt when I, you know, I felt the power of what was happening when I pulled the trigger. And uh, obviously, having a, a population of a bunch of incompetent people walking around with guns would be bad, and they'd be a hazard to the people around them if they started pulling it out, uh, even if there was a threat. But taking the people's guns away doesn't do anything but make innocent people helpless. Um, what is the balance of having a safe society where people are armed? Well, you'd, you'd like to have background checks. You know, you want to make sure people are responsible with the guns absolutely I mean you and I know both you know a lot of people probably should not be having guns uh, and not just because of criminal reasons but also because of uh, you know if you're blind and you can't shoot and you're trying to fend off an attacker and you don't look behind them and you fire the wrong type of bullet you hit three or four people behind them and you never hit the assailant right uh, so definitely some training definitely some background checks I, I am for those uh, but in terms of the balance, uh, it, it, it's, it's basically, can you competently own and operate a firearm? That is what we have to test and assess. And if, that's, and if you do, boom, there's no questions. Uh, none of this like, well, if you're in California, you can carry open, but you can't have any bullets of this. And none of that hanky-panky, and it can only be five bullets, it can't be six, no extended, mate, no. People are allowed to carry whatever weapon they like that, that fits their personal uh, uh, taste and preferences for defense. Uh, and then you just let them. So, you know, screen, uh, make sure people physically can and mentally should uh, uh, operate a firearm. Uh, but then after that, it's kind of like, okay, get out of people's way. Uh, and frankly, you know, it's, there's no perfect scenario. There's no perfect balance. I'm right. sure there will be accidental shootings and, you know, maybe you have to tweak and tailor the, the policy, even by state by state. Uh, but right now in places like California, Chicago, Illinois, uh, any major city where guns, guns are bad, okay? Uh, <laughs> okay, fine. Bad guys are going to have guns, but maybe you should allow people to at least carry them. So it, it, we, we could certainly liberate uh, certain gun laws in certain areas of the country, but uh, I'm certainly not for, well, anyone could get a gun and, oh, that's all right, you're, you're on meth and you're on a <laughs> vendetta against your ex. Here's a gun anyway. So there should be a little bit of background check there. Aaron, do you have any advice as someone who's experienced with guns, uh, how to train? I mean, to really get in the, the right mindset, if you actually did have to be in combat and actually shoot someone. I mean, if when you're in that moment and your adrenaline's running, I mean, how do you prepare for something like that? Well, you you train, but you don't prepare because it's sprung on you. Usually, they're not sending you an email the day before saying, "Hey, I'm gonna mug you in the in the alley." Right. Um, one thing. I mean, this is for me in particular. I'm a misanthrope, and I really don't care anymore. So, like, taking a life is is you know, if they're trying to assail me or assault me. 
and I'd kill him. I'd, I'd be perfectly fine. I wouldn't need, oh, do you need a therapist? Do you need to talk? No, I'd kill the bad guy, and, and I feel pretty good about it, actually, and I'm, I'm going to go have a drink and relax now. Um, so realizing there are evil people out there and kind of realizing a lot of them need to die, that will quelch or resolve the, the moral issue. But in terms of response and training, yeah, they have. there's different uh, classes, different – uh, uh, you know, military, ex-military, ex-cops, current cops, current military, they have training that you can take, and there's close quarters, there's rifle, uh, but definitely you want to take a class, not just the safety class, but like, okay, here's, you're going to practice drawing, okay, you're going to practice drawing and shooting, you're going to shoot without using the sights, you're going to shoot using the sights, and then a, a big part of it, especially the legal component, and any good carry conceal instructor will do this, is go over identifying um, your environment, identifying your, your, your surroundings, and staying out of those situations. Because frankly, as much as you'd like to kill the bad guy, uh, you don't want the legal hassle that comes with it. So you avoid bad parts of town. You maybe don't go down, down that dark alley. You're constantly looking around. There's a group of people over there, and you walk away. Not because you're, you're, you're cowards or afraid of them. It's because if you have to pull your gun on this suspicious looking group of people, nothing really good is going to come of it. Uh, so the, do as much mental and physical preparation as you can for the hopefully not to happen event that you are going to have to pull your gun. Uh, but that if it does happen, one, you're ready and committed to kill someone because you're not going to wing them. You're not going to, well, I'll just shoot him in the leg and that'll be a warning shot. No, you're, you're going to go, you know, dead center mass and try and kill him. Uh, so mentally get over that and then be able to physically draw your gun, remain calm. Uh, and then other things that and this will come with a good instructor, like look behind the people you're shooting. Because if there's a bunch of school children, maybe you might want to move around. So it, it's stuff like that. But there's, there's a fair, it's like taking a motorcycle safety class, you, environment, uh, uh, defensive maneuvers, stuff like that, getting in the right mentality, it's absolutely something that you should take. Yeah, there's a lot to think about, and I, I think anyone who's actually shot a gun and has ran over the scenario in their head would agree that there's there's just there's a lot to think about, and, and it's, a, it's a big responsibility to to have a gun. So, uh, thanks for sharing that, first of all, Aaron. Um, Aaron, in conclusion, uh, you're a successful guy, and um, I, I believe that you owe it to the audience and the world to acknowledge your white privilege. And I wanted to give you an opportunity <laughs> on this platform to acknowledge it, which has obviously contributed to the success you've had in life with your YouTube channel and your business. Right. Um, right. So go ahead. What? Uh, can I curse or no? <laughs> you can curse. Everyone can suck my white dick, okay, there. I busted my ass off. You can all go to hell. Here's, here's what I'd really like to say I mean, on top of that. They know it's BS. That, that's what it is. They all know it's BS. They think, look, you're not fooling me. You might fool a bunch of other people in universities and some other swip of white people. You ain't going to fool me. You ain't going to fool you. You just want my money. That's all it is. You want me to give up advantage? No, terribly sorry I worked hard. You didn't get over it. It has nothing to do with skin color. It has nothing to do with my plumbing. Now, you can join us. You can be successful anytime if you work hard. But I know leftists and liberals hate working hard. And uh, whereas if you're a white male liberal, you have nothing to hide behind. But if you're a non-white male liberal, you got either your gender, your race, your uh, ethnicity, whatever, your, your mental illness. You can run behind that. But you ain't fooling me. You're just a lazy bum that doesn't want to work. And blaming my success on the color of my skin is really not going to lead to success in your life either. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, I, I was looking forward to asking you that question. Aaron, if people want to find out more information on you or uh, be able to learn more about you, where would they go and what would they find? Uh, the best site to go to is captaincapitalism.blogspot.com. And if you look to the left, you'll see all the different, you know, the YouTube links, the Twitter. I'm on everything pretty much. But that's kind of the mothership site. So you go to captaincapitalism.blogspot.com. And I got links there for Asshole Consulting if you needed advice. I got links to my books. I got links to my podcast. I got links YouTube, Twitter. I mean, you, you know the racket. It, it's all there. So the simplest thing, go to captaincapitalism.blogspot.com and, and you'll find me there. Aaron, thanks so much for taking the time to come on the show with me today. All right. Thanks for having me, Ken.